Sunday of the Blessed Month of Hatur. And as we were saying last Sunday, um, the theme of this month is the Word of God and the heart. Um, and as we read today, the parable of the sower, just like we did last week. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and so um, in ancient Egypt, um, until the building of, of the dams over there, that there were three main seasons um, relating to the Nile and its inundation and the harvest and, and the farmers, because most of the Copts at that time, were, this was their occupation. <clears throat> so during the time of the inundation of the Nile, um, as it concluded, it would leave very rich soil um, behind that needed to be plowed and seeded. And that's why the church selected these readings today to relate to what the people were thinking and doing and working at that time. <clears throat> um, and although most of us here, or all of us probably, are not farmers, um, the church still left these readings intentionally um, to remind us of the more important spiritual truths that the Lord explained here in, in the gospel. Um, <clears throat> And the church basically, what as, as we've said before, translates the daily elements of our life and our work into teachings of faith to help us. In the early church, unfortunately, um, or fortunately, um, they were just needed reminders of what they were doing at work for God. And little by little, the church put in those reminders into our calendar and into its... its um, feasts and fasts <clears throat> now those we have the now thank god we have the remainders reminders in place um but we just need to extract from them the spiritual truths and the purposes of those those uh, uh events <clears throat> anyway um last week we spoke about the seed god willing today um we speak more importantly uh, not importantly but essentially for our responsibility because like we were saying last week the seed the word of god is powerful and it, it can do anything and everything in us. But the problem, though, is with the soil. And sometimes when people explain uh, the, this parable, they say, they assume that what the Lord is trying to say is some people's hearts are essentially good and others are evil. But if you look at the parable a little bit more closely, it's the soil is not bad by nature, but by what? By what was put in it, or what was done to it, right? So just like all of us, our hearts are good. We were created in the image and likeness of God. And we have the capacity and the ability to become temples of God and holy and righteous and saints. But because of what happens in, in the daily life with the thorns and the rocks, that soil becomes polluted <clears throat> as our hearts. So as St. Cyril explains to us today, um, the, especially the, the soil of the wayside and the rocky and the thorny ground um, talks about how this affects our minds and our hearts, right? If he says, no sacred or divine word will be able to enter those who have minds that are hard and unyielding. So that's, that's the wayside, right? Or the ones that have rocks. So what, is, what am I doing or allowing to be done in my life that is putting these obstacles in, in ha having a soft, and a tender heart like God. <clears throat> so he says, um, men of this kind or people of this kind are highways that are trodden by unclean spirits and by Satan himself. And they shall never be products of holy fruit because their hearts are sterile and unfaithful. Um, and then when he talks about the thorns, he says, a religion without roots, when this kind of person goes out of the church, they immediately forget the holy teachings that he has heard. The Lord explained this um, later on in, in this chapter. And as long as the Christians are left in peace, he keeps the faith. But as soon as persecution arises or trouble, he will be ready to take flight in search of safety. <clears throat> so the problem here is that um, there's a lot of work that needs to be done to the soil before you plant the seed. Right? Same thing with us. Before we read scripture or listen to sermons or grow in grace or read um, a spiritual uh, edifying books, we need to make sure that we're cultivating our hearts so that the seed has a place. Um, <clears throat> and so 
Um, it's painful and painstaking. Yes. Um, just like if, if you notice when we're doing the grading of the land, we find a lot of junk. <laughs> that junk needs to be removed in order to build a good, a good build, a solid foundation. Right? Same thing with planting. You, you can't plant in, in a place where there's no good fruit and there's a bunch of obstacles. Um, <clears throat> either um, the, if it's a strong, powerful tree, will will uh, invade and push those obstacles away, which is a lot rarer than the tree not finding any ability to grow. <clears throat> so that sometimes affects our growth in our spiritual life because we're not removing the obstacles uh, that we have before us. Everyone has distractions and different obstacles. So we need to sit with ourselves and, and view uh, in our hearts what is taking all of this um, good soul. Um, <clears throat> and sometimes what needs to be done is uh, a complete uh, overdue of, of, of the land, right? Um, it's like a person who is extremely sick, like with cancer or some very debilitating um, illness that needs to go through a treatment that almost kills them. Why? Because... Uh, this sickness has overcome the person so much that you can't just give them one pill or um, tell them to watch their diet or, or, or do exercise and then the problem will be solved. No, it's, it's too late for those interventions that need something much more drastic, even to the point of almost killing the person, right? Because what's inside is growing, has grown too much. It needs to be changed <clears throat> and transformed. Um, and so that's why when the healthy person knows that there is a germ or a sickness, especially as you know, experience of uh, COVID and, and things like that, we're, we're concerned, about, I can't let one germ in my body or, 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 let, or else it can have a very um, powerful response weakening me, right? <clears throat> so in the spiritual life, we have to look at the, the different things that we do or see, or, or or place in our priorities to see if it's affecting me uh, in a healthy way or not. Um, and sometimes the action that is needed to take is severe, um, but that is for um, that is for our overall health. <clears throat> and and that's why in the Old Testament, um, symbolically, when the Lord asks the Israelites um, to annihilate their enemies completely. Not even to take sometimes not even to take one thing from them, um, like in the book of Joshua, it was that was the purpose to, to realize I can't let anything influence me, even if it seems good on the outward. I have to be very careful um, and probably trust the things more that the church um, and and the scriptures tell me to avoid. <clears throat> so. Um, uh, the spiritual life is not easy, not because the work is hard um, to be done, but it just needs to be done, right? Uh, eliminating the thorns is, is not a difficult task, especially in the beginning, right? Removing the stones is, is not hard. It just takes a long time, and it takes um, someone who is careful to, to, to remove what is needed to, to remove, rather than just say, oh, it's not a big deal. All the land is, is like this. Everyone is going through the same thing. That's, that's no excuse. Um, <clears throat> because when the church places before us the saints and the righteous people, even the ones who live among us uh, or have lived among us, these, these beacons are, are for, to encourage us to, to push ourselves even harder and to take out that thorn or to remove that stone or uh, to... Bound, put boundaries um, along the wayside so no one's going to step on on, on us. <clears throat> Again, trigger chilling, not not physical. So uh, this is what God is asking for us um, relating to this parable. Um, as we've probably said before, there's kind of a twofold action here of what we need. To be doing in order to bear fruit worthy of, of repentance. So there's a downward 
um, or a, a, a deepening um, into the soil and, and cleansing it, like we said, to purify the heart and, and learning uh, about scripture and um, repenting wholeheartedly and removing um, any sins or any obstacles in our sinful life. But then there's an upward um, growth um, in which we do good deeds uh, and uh, please God as much as we can by living a holy and righteous life according to his grace. <clears throat> so, um, in a sense, we have to remind ourselves of, like we said in the beginning, why God and the church is placing this parable uh, for us today. Um, some people say, well, God only cares about my spiritual life, but he doesn't care about my daily life. Of course, this is far from the truth, right? Um, if, if that was the case, why did the church uh, apply the readings to the daily life and work of the people, right? So God is um, overwhelmingly um, care, caring about us in every aspect of our life. Um, and the psalmist says this in Psalm 8. He says, um, When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? Right? Uh, for you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. So the, the idea here is the psalmist is saying, look at this great world and the creation that you have created, the heaven, the earth, the sea, and everything that is in them, and every minute detail you have um, taken care of, how much more um, is, is I, right? How, how much more uh, have you taken care of, of mankind, but also me personally? <clears throat> so um, St. John Chrysostom talks about this. Uh, his feast is coming up there, uh, this week, um, I believe Saturday. And he says, um, what is it about human beings? He says, taking full account of such marvelous care and such wonderful providence on God's part and the arrangements he has put in place for the salvation of the human race, the psalmist is struck with complete wonder and amazement as to why on earth God considered them worthy of attention, right? So this is what we're supposed to be doing when we till our heart, right? Um, when we contemplate and think about how great God is, and how loving he is towards me personally by taking care of all of these little details that sometimes I don't even uh, see or understand or care of, then I begin to wonder, who am I that God is taking care of me, <clears throat> right? And he says, um, later on, he says, um, if you consider what was done and is being done for their sake and what they will enjoy afterwards, you will be stricken with awe and then you'll see clearly how this being is an object of such attention on God's part, right? So um, that brings us to the uh, St. Gregory of Nazianzus also says the same thing um, in, in contemplating on this uh, Psalm 8, 3, verse 3. He says, what is this new mystery concerning me? I am small and great, lowly and exalted, mortal and immortal, because we will inherit immortality on, on the last day earthly and heavenly, because we have the Holy Spirit inside of us. <clears throat> he says, I am connected with the world below and likewise with God. I am connected with the flesh and likewise with the spirit. Um, and so when we realize that we are not just human beings, but we are um, temples of the Holy Spirit, the life has a new meaning. It has, uh, we have new purpose. Um, and sometimes we just need to remind ourselves that we are not just physical, but we are bearing the image of the heavenly man who took our form so that we may partake of his divine nature. Um, <clears throat> of course, as you know, that doesn't mean we become God, but the goal is to become like God and to be one with him. Um, <clears throat> that was a whole other uh, uh, heresy. Um, but it's from these contemplations that the spirit draws from within us the feeling and the attitude of gratitude and thanksgiving. Um, and so the more we recognize his grace and his love and his mercy and his compassion and his care of every detail of our life, the, more, the easier it is for, to, for us to thank him. Even before we ask of anything, as the church has taught us 
multiple times over. And in every prayer that we pray, don't forget to thank Him first. Because you need to have this spirit of gratitude, and it will be better for you if you do. <clears throat> um, what am I mean by that? Um, even uh, some studies in research has um, concluded that when people have an attitude of thankfulness um, and gratitude, they, they didn't say specifically towards God or not, but just the person who trains themselves to be thankful is better overall, physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and relationally. Um, and studies have proved this, <laughs> right? So th the church has known this for centuries, um, but now science is beginning to prove that if we have an attitude of thankfulness and thanksgiving, not just once a year, but every day of our lives, we become better, we become happier. Um, again, science is proving this. Um, and probably still needs a little uh, more time for them to conclude even more powerfully this. <clears throat> but for example, um, physically, um, people who are sick have less symptoms. Um, they, they decided to exercise more. They felt their pain less. I think it was about 10% less. Um, they slept better and longer, and they had increased energy, and their overall work was healthy. If you want to be healthy, okay, learn to thank God, right? Um, uh, they were more productive. They improved in their decision-making. They were more optimistic. They were less self-centered. They had higher self-esteem. They were more resilient. Uh, the list goes on and on. But as you can tell, it's better for us if we learn to thank God. Um, not, and, and some of the tools, there's many ways we can do this besides just one of the simple things is just to start the day with a prayer of thanksgiving among other prayers as the church has taught us. <clears throat> and to end the day, thinking about what, can I thank God for? Um, uh, and you, you, in the, these journals and articles, some people say, well, why don't you keep a record or a journal of what to think, to be thankful for, to remind yourself. <clears throat> um, and so, and, and there's many people, again, the contemporary saints in our lives, that you see them going through difficulties and through sickness and even facing death. I've met many people facing death and Sometimes, as a priest, you try to help them by extracting their emotions so that they have this release and catharsis instead of bottling it up. And sometimes I try to say, you know, to to focus a little bit on on ha having them at least express to the priest their their pain and their suffering. And for a lot of these saintly people, they just thank God, right? Um, same thing for for our prayers, right? Um, we receive a lot of prayers to place on the altar, right? And filled with supplications and requests for for people themselves and for others. Um, but every now and then, we get we get a paper that says, "Thank God for everything." That's one of the best prayers. Why? Because they realize we we need things, but we should be thankful first of what we have before we ask, um, because. Even if we ask and ask and ask and don't realize what we have, then we're going to keep asking <laughs> and not realize that we've already have what we, what we need before we even ask. Um, and so um, this is the, the attitude that, that God wants us to have uh, before even we open and ask. We should see and, and realize the great grace that we are living in and what we should be thankful for. May the God of all grace give us the spirit of thankfulness um, that pushes us not only to be happy, but to, to go deep into the soil and to remove all the thorns and, and the stones and to uh, uh, boundary, put boundaries around um, our hearts that it may give praise and glory to God. And uh, praise be to him now for the age of Bless.